speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As a teenager, I borrowed my mom's clothes often, and she was always very gracious to not let on that she was really annoyed when her favorite things went missing. One brisk morning, I borrowed her jacket to wear to school, and at some point during the day, I reached into the pocket and found several seashells. Now, it's important that you know I grew up in Montgomery, Alabama, which is a good three hours from any seashell procuring area. So it was kind of odd to reach in and have seashells in the pocket. So when I got home, I asked her about the shells. She told me that she collected them when amazing things happened to her. One was the, from the beach near her childhood home where she would go and sit on the pier with her father and have those deep heart-to-hearts that sometimes mothers and daughters have, mothers and fathers have. And another one of the seashells was from when she was dating my stepdad and they went to the beach together. And it was on that trip that she knew that he was the one for her. So she reached down and picked up a shell and put it in her pocket. She kept these shells in her pocket as a touchstone, a way for her to connect with those holy moments in her life. She could reach in and remember her dad years after he passed away, or reach in and smile remembering that moment with my stepfather. She kept them in that jacket because she always knew where they were, and she could reach in and get them at any time. Since she taught me this practice at a young age, I've been able to pick up items of holy moments throughout my life and keep them and hold on to them. I kept them in my backpack in college, in my desk once I began working, and now they're in, at our home in an heirloom piece of furniture that's important to our family. It's a lovely and holy thing to have these touchstones, to be able to reach and reconnect with my own encounters with God anytime I'd like. Today on Transfiguration Sunday, our readings are full of amazing encounters with God. In our Old Testament lesson, we hear of Elisha viewing Elijah's ascension into heaven. Now, this is a bit confusing because their names are very similar. Elijah is the older prophet of Israel, and he is mentoring Elisha to be the prophet when he is gone. Today's story is about Elijah's last day, and Elisha's viewing of his ascent into heaven. They go on this long journey together through Bethel and Jericho, and then outside the River Jordan. And each time they enter a new place, the prophets there warn that it's Elijah's last day. Now, isn't it interesting how many people knew that it was Elijah's last day? But they keep warning him. They keep warning Elisha that he should remain in the city. But Elisha, the mentee, he really wants to continue on, perhaps to be there for his mentor or to see what will happen at this glorious moment. And after all the cities... They enter into the wilderness, and Elisha asks for a double portion of his mentor's spirit. Then a chariot of fire and horses of fire come, and they take Elijah up in the whirlwind. And Elisha witnesses the whole thing. He is able to keep watch, and he is able to inherit a double portion of Elijah's spirit. Now, we don't know what a double portion of spirit is, but I imagine it's more like encouragement than, let's say, magical powers. The moment with God is surely transformative for Elijah, the mentor, ascending into heaven. However, here's what I love about the story. This moment is transformative for Elisha, the mentee. Elisha went on this long journey with his mentor, and he receives a double portion of his spirit, and he watches his mentor ascend into heaven. So after mourning the loss of his mentor, Elisha returns. Elisha is now the chief prophet of Israel, and he inherits both a double portion of his mentor's spirit and also his mantle, which is a piece of clothing a physical reminder of his mentor. 
using the mantle and the double portion of spirit, Elisha has a powerful ministry with the people of God. Witnessing that moment, inheriting the spirit and the mantle, give him the confidence he needs to go out and do what he is called to do. What he receives in that moment was also a recognition that he had what he needed, strength for the journey, and gave him confidence to take on his own calling. He has the spirit and the mantle as his own touchstones as he goes out to do the ministry of God. I've had experiences where I have encountered God, and I collect items along the way as touchstones. The first one I can remember was when I was in college, and I was on pilgrimage in Iona, Scotland. We had been on this long, long hike. I don't know how we got lost, but we managed to get lost. And we go all the way, and our goal was to get to St. Columba's Bay. And we finally get there. After traipsing through Heather and going way far off the path, we finally get to St. Columba's Bay. And so I climbed a hill, and I sat down by the bay. And I could hear these waves rolling over the rocks. It was a rock beach, not a sand beach. It was the most glorious sound of the water rushing in and out over those rocks. And I could feel the warm sun on my skin. And God was so present there, I could have reached out and touched God. I learned from my guide that the people around there called this a thin place, where the line between heaven and earth is so thin you could touch God. Now that moment was not my call story, that happened before, but that moment in Iona helped me realize that I was on the right path to becoming a priest. So before I left, I reached down and I picked up this rock from St. Columbus Bay. And I began my own collection, like my mother, of things when important, amazing things, encounters with God, happen to me. When I need a bit of encouragement, I can reach out and touch this stone and other items in the collection and remember what God has done in my life. Like Elisha, I can return to those touchstones when I need them and be strengthened for the journey ahead. Now, as we leave this season of Epiphany and head into the season of Lent, it's a time for us to take stock of our own lives, both individually and as a community. What are your touchstones from your encounters with God? It might be a tangible item, it might be a memory, it could be a person. Think about what your touchstones are. What are those touchstones that have strengthened you for the journey ahead? Today we are reminded of holy encounters with God and touchstones and encouragement that we are given. When we encounter God, it is glorious and it is holy and it is hopefully helpful to us. Those encounters give us strength for the journey to continue to do the work God has given us to do. Just like Elisha, you do not need magical powers to do amazing things here in Rye. You already have the gifts and the talents and the resources you need to continue to do God's work here. But sometimes a little bit of confidence helps, right? Sometimes it's nice to touch in with those touchstones. So take this time to reconnect with your touchstones. Reconnect yourself to those moments that you've already had. Perhaps close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, and reconnect yourself to that moment where you felt close to God. Reach out to the touchstone if you have one, and remind yourself of that moment and what you learned. Are you still living in line with that learning? And then be open. Be open to new experiences of God in your life. Where can you see God if you look? Perhaps on your commute, or in a moment with your family, or in the way the light can shine through the windows just so, or I'm pretty partial to the brightness of the snow, you know, right after it snowed, before you've gone out into it. Maybe that's where you have a moment with God. What do you learn when you encounter God? And how might what you see impact you? And if you can, what touchstones can you carry away from the experience? We all have encounters with God. 
What will your response be to reconnecting with your touchstone this week? Amen.